a true giant of quantum revolution was Warner Heisenberg. And from the vagueness of positions of electrons in de Broglie's standing wave orbits, he drew a tremendous insight which he stated like this. The more precisely the position is determined, the less precisely the momentum is known, and vice versa. And while it may sound like a bunch of gobbledygook, it was the insight necessary to understand how an object can be both a particle and a wave. This single statement led to the understanding that subatomic particles can disappear and reappear in another place. And they can do this without existing in the intervening space. When an electron is trapped inside an atom, the places it can disappear and reappear include specific locations around the nucleus. And that makes it look like a shell. Basic particles can also be in more than one place at a time, if the time is brief enough. An electron can travel from here to there along all possible paths simultaneously. And even more astounding, these particles can appear out of the nothingness of space, exist for an extremely brief instant, and then disappear. Scientists call them virtual particles. They may be virtual, but they can have very real effects. All this jumping around makes particle descriptions so inexact. But then existence itself is inexact at these tiny scales. The question is often asked, what is it that is waving when a particle is described as a wave? And after a lot of hem-hawing around the issue, the right answer is, existence is waving. The particle is jumping around, coming into and out of existence. And those places where the wave crests are maximum are the places where the particle materializes, most of the time while the places where the crest are minimum are the places the particle avoids. The wave is a map of the particle's existence. And as the wave changes, the particle changes as well. 